Oh, and you can see right away, Adam Orzinski. Make no mistake, definitely wants to be on his back in this situation. You know, the thing we have to just get out there very quickly is the fact that Mateusz Denise, if you want to talk about butterfly guard, you've got to talk about Marcel Marcelo Garcia. Pretty much wrote the book on the modern butterfly guard. Adam Wodzinski's game, very much reflective of the, the work done by Marcelo Garcia in establishing that position and creating the various attack sequences available. And Mateus Denise got his black belt from the hands of Marcelo Garcia, has trained with him for, I don't even know how long at this stage, maybe seven or eight years, longer possibly, every day on the mats of that academy in right there in Midtown Manhattan, New York. So Mateus Denise knows a thing or two about the butterfly guard. Absolutely. And Borodzinski has done uh, his own sort of intricate uh, innovations, I even want to say, on the butterfly guard. He is much, much taller. And I think that it's sort of interesting to see how he uses his lankiness. Taller than Marcelo, you mean? Well, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> But taller even for the body type that you might see most butterfly guard players. Right. right? It's and generally something that people with shorter legs kind of will favor, right? Absolutely. And he uses uh, the overhook a lot, which right now you see Mateus Denise taking full advantage of the, of the gifted underhook. And it's difficult, but Adam Wodzinski, by extension of having a good butterfly guard, also has a good half guard and a good X guard as well. You see him right here really working to get that left butterfly hook in. And Mateus Denise really keeping his right hip low to the ground. That smash half guard position on top from uh, Mateus Denise. If you've spent any time playing on bottom in half guard, you'll know that it is a very difficult posture to contend with because you open your guard a little to try and adjust, and that top guy's gone. He'll, he'll blast right through it. And Matthias Denise is making life very difficult for Adam Wodzinski, especially with that head position right here. Matthias Denise, nicknamed King Kong, absolute brute of a man, incredibly physically strong, up at heavyweight as well. We saw him compete the majority of his IBJJF career as a, as a medium heavyweight, so. Going up in weight to the heavyweight division is, um, well, he's been obviously packing on the pounds, and I can only imagine he's stronger than ever. Yeah, he's also one of those few, com uh, I would say, few competitors that has seen success across all rule sets, across all gi, no gi, doesn't matter. ADCC world champion, IBJJF no gi world champion, and now, once again, here at the IBJJF gi, Pan Championships. You can see that Adam desperately trying to fight that head position because Matez Denise is using the top of his head and sticking it underneath the jaw of Adam Wodzinski and driving forward with that. And So far though, Wodzinski's been really adamant to keep this belt grip. I feel like he he's definitely very secure in wanting to get either that left arm, or that left leg rather, butterfly hook back in, or regather a close guard of some sort. Well, it's near impossible for him to dig the underhook through, because the way that uh, Denise has positioned himself and the way that he has, he's keeping his posture so low, you can see that Adam's left arm, the elbow is high, his hand is in the collar. He's doing his best to frame, but well, uh, Denise is just driving forward such heavy pressure. Well, now he's creating a little bit of space with that, with that grip, with the, and he lets go of it. But he did have a little bit of space created for himself with that left hand collar grip. And now you see him here framing. This is a very important battle right now for Adam Wojcicki. He doesn't want to let Mateusz Denise's head super close to him. And you see how Denise is really trying to ram his head through that, ram his head through that frame. Oh, didn't. Wardinski even looking like he wanted to throw his leg over the top of Denise for a second.
Just over the halfway point of this match, Denise up by one advantage versus Wardzinski. Having a difficult time passing this, this half guard. And Wardzinski really keen on keeping it, trying to, trying to turn the hips back straight to get this left leg butterfly hook back in. And once again, you see Denise feet, or sorry, hip to the floor. Adam's trying to get his left butterfly hook in now. The half guard is now open. Goes back to crossing the ankles and switches again. Loop choke attempted, that's tight. Oh, that could be a good. That was a solid loop choke attempt right there from Adam Wojcicki, and now Denise trying to pass on the other side. Oh, and a possible butterfly guard attempt here too. He's using the other foot to supplement the attempt. The base of Mateusz Denise though, and he looked up to double check to see whether that loop choke was worth an advantage, it was not. It looked like it could have been. Yeah, I felt it was decent as far as uh, loop choke attempts go, and referees didn't seem to think so, but still just one advantage for Denise. About three minutes on the clock. Now in a bit more of an open sort of Z-guard, quarter guard position. This knee shield also a really good way to set up the butterfly guard. If Wardzinski uses this overhook now, it seems like he's trying to change his game plan a little bit. But once again, the heavy hips of Mateo Stini is just so hard to get off balance in any sort of way like that. Oh, look at him passing around to the other side. I thought that uh, Mateo was gonna backstep with his left leg and pass around almost into a leg drag, but still very much in this butterfly guard style position and his base is really excellent I and mean, it's a case study in how to defend the oh butterfly guard goodness. and he finally manages to get around and immediately threatens the back this is head and arm territory right here he didn't get the pass points oh, he gets Wojcinski back to the half managed guard. to catch the leg into a half now he gets free he's over off to the side he's got the underhook across face three points for Mateusz Denise Really great effort from Adam Wardzinski, but Mateusz Denise keeping his hips just too heavy. He his was movement too relentless good. in that pass. He just wouldn't let it go. Like a dog on a bone. Mateusz Denise has this really deep grip on the, on the collar, on the lapel around, around the back, rather of Adam Wardzinski. See, Wardzinski's still trying to create that space, still trying to make something happen here. He's back to the half guard, still giving up. Yep, recovers the half. And recovers back to closed guard. Now Adam Wardzinski needs to work. He has that lapel out. Assum assuming he is able to sweep, he would also need to pass the guard to get back into this match. So, Teo Sinise can essentially stay in this closed guard. Thirty seconds approximately remaining in this match. Penalty there against Denise. Of course, the penalties take twenty seconds for a stalling penalty to come into effect. So Denise is gonna be perfectly fine with taking two penalties. A second, that was very quick actually. Gives an advantage to uh, Wodzinski, but even, even if, yeah, even if you weren't score two for accumulated penalties, it still wouldn't be enough.
There's your winner, Mateus Denise of Alliance, advances through into the semi-final.